Imagine spending a year in a labor camp for watching a foreign movie, a reality for many in North Korea. This chilling statement sets the stage for our deep dive into the often hushed realities of North Korea's punishment system. North Korea, a nation shrouded in mystery and tightly controlled propaganda, has a highly repressive and punitive system. This is not mere speculation or Western bias, but a fact corroborated by multiple international human rights bodies. The country is ranked among the worst in the world when it comes to human rights, a grim tribute to its systemic and widespread abuses. What's important to understand is that the North Korean regime has constructed an elaborate and brutal system of control, one that extends far beyond the conventional definition of law and order. It's a system designed to suppress, to silence, and to instill fear. It's a system where the line between crime and innocence is often blurred and the consequences can be severe and inhumane. From public executions to forced labor, the types of punishments meted out in North Korea are as varied as they are brutal. For instance, the so-called three generations of punishment rule, where if one person is found guilty of a crime, their entire family for three generations, that's children, parents, and grandparents, can be interned in prison camps. There are other forms of punishment too, like banishment to remote areas, forced labor, and more. And these punishments aren't reserved for heinous crimes alone. They can be imposed for actions we might consider trivial or mundane. Watching a foreign movie, making an international phone call, or even failing to dust a portrait of a national leader can lead to severe repercussions. Now, it's essential to remember that these are not just statistics or faceless facts. These are human lives we're talking about individuals subject to a horrifying level of control and oppression. Now that we've established the shocking reality of North Korea's punishment system, let's delve into the specifics. In North Korea, even the least severe punishments seem harsh to most of us. So let's delve into the details, shall we? Imagine a society where you are subjected to public criticism for minor infractions. This is the reality in North Korea, where public criticism sessions are a common form of punishment. These sessions can be likened to a public shaming, with individuals standing in front of their peers while their so-called crimes are read out loud. The crimes could range from something as mundane as not keeping your house clean to more significant offenses like listening to foreign radio broadcasts. Next, we have fines. Now fines might seem like a standard form of punishment, but in North Korea, they are often used for trivial offenses that wouldn't warrant such a penalty elsewhere. For example, you might receive a fine for not wearing your Kim Il-sung badge in public, or perhaps for missing a compulsory mass dance. The severity of these fines can vary, but they often represent a significant burden for the average North Korean citizen. Then, there are short-term detentions. This punishment is reserved for those who commit what are considered minor crimes, such as petty theft or minor public disturbances. Individuals are held in detention centers, where they are subjected to hard labor, often for several weeks at a time. This form of punishment not only serves as a deterrent but also a form of re-education, aimed at instilling a sense of loyalty to the state. So, while we might view these forms of punishment as severe, within the context of North Korean society, they are considered the least severe. The punishments escalate from here, with each step up in severity reserved for crimes that the state deems more serious. While these punishments might seem severe, they are considered the least harsh in North Korea. And remember, we are yet to explore the intermediate and most severe punishments, so brace yourself for the journey ahead. Moving up the scale, we find punishments that are even more daunting. The North Korean justice system, known for its harshness, doesn't stop at minor penalties. Intermediate punishments are more severe and can be imposed for a variety of offenses. Forced labor is one such punishment. It's not just a few hours of community service. We're talking about grueling physical work for months, sometimes years at a time. Offenders are sent to labor camps where they are forced to work in brutal conditions, doing backbreaking work like mining, logging, or farming. The work is hard, the hours are long, and the conditions are often dangerous. This punishment is typically meted out for offenses such as petty theft, illegal trading, or unauthorized travel within the country. Long-term detention is another intermediate punishment. This is not your typical jail time. Those sentenced to long-term detention can spend years, even decades in North Korea's detention centers. These are places where basic human rights are often ignored and conditions are far from humane. Overcrowding is common, 
food and medical care are scarce, and abuse is rampant. Offenses that might result in long-term detention include spreading rumors about the government, criticism of the regime, or attempting to access foreign media. These intermediate punishments serve not only as a penalty, but also as a deterrent. The North Korean regime uses these severe punishments to instill fear and maintain control over its population. It's a grim reality that for many North Koreans, a minor misstep could result in years of forced labor or long-term detention. As daunting as these intermediate punishments are, they are not the worst that North Korea's justice system can dole out. As we move up the scale, the punishments become even more severe. At the top of the scale, we find punishments that are truly terrifying. North Korea's most severe penalties include life imprisonment, public execution, and the infamous three generations rule. Each of these punishments carries a weight and severity that's difficult to comprehend. Let's start with life imprisonment. It's not an uncommon punishment for severe crimes in many countries, but in North Korea, it takes on a whole new level of harshness. It's often imposed for crimes against the state such as espionage, treason, or plotting against the government. However, it can also be applied for less obvious crimes like unauthorized contact with foreigners or the distribution of foreign media. In these cases, life imprisonment doesn't just mean a life behind bars. It often involves harsh labor, malnutrition, and brutal treatment. Next, we have public execution. This is a form of punishment that's as much about making a public statement as it is about penalizing the crime. It's typically reserved for serious crimes such as murder or drug trafficking. However, reports suggest that it has also been used for less severe offenses, like theft or watching forbidden foreign media. The idea behind public executions is to create a climate of fear and obedience. Then there's the three generations rule. This is perhaps one of the most chilling aspects of North Korea's punishment system. Here, if a person commits a crime considered to be against the state, it's not just the individual who pays the price. Their children and grandchildren will also be born into prison camps, serving a life sentence for a crime they didn't commit. It's a horrifying concept, designed to deter potential dissidents by punishing their entire lineage. These punishments are a stark reminder of the brutal reality of life in North Korea. They serve to maintain a level of control and obedience that's hard to fathom from the outside looking in. Yet, they are the grim reality for many living under this regime. In the past 10 minutes, we've taken a deep dive into North Korea's punishment system. We've journeyed through the least severe punishments, where citizens may face public criticism or re-education for minor offenses. It's a world where a simple mistake such as an incorrect political slogan can result in scrutiny and humiliation. We then delved into the intermediate punishments, where individuals can be subject to forced labor, often under harsh and dangerous conditions. Here, the offenses may range from perceived disloyalty to the state, unauthorized foreign media consumption, or even attempting to leave the country without permission. Finally, we uncovered the most severe punishments, the ones that truly chill the bone. These include lifelong imprisonment in political prison camps, and in some extreme cases, public executions. The reasons for these extreme punishments can be as seemingly trivial as perceived disrespect towards the leaders or as significant as perceived acts of treason. But what's the world's response to this? Unfortunately, the international community's hands are somewhat tied. Despite numerous reports from defectors and satellite imagery confirming the existence of these prison camps, North Korea continues to deny these allegations. The United Nations has repeatedly condemned North Korea for its human rights abuses. The UN's Commission of Inquiry on Human Rights in North Korea has even stated that these systematic, widespread, and gross human rights violations reveal a state that does not have any parallel in the contemporary world. Several countries and organizations have imposed sanctions on North Korea, aiming to pressure the regime into improving its human rights record. However, these measures have yet to yield significant changes. While it's hard to imagine living under such a system, it's vital that we continue to raise awareness about these human rights abuses. By shining a light on the dark corners of North Korea's punishment system, we're not just informing ourselves, but also reminding those in power that the world is watching.